So this month, you guys have the advantage of an extra class. So we can um we can do one recipe illustration today from scratch. And then next week, maybe I can do one common session for all batches. Let's do a recap of all the food related stuff that we have done in the past three classes. Then we can get a better picture of what we can do with all the information we have, yeah? Okay, so we started out with just making clusters of food. In the context of recipe illustration, this would probably be one page where either you could then write the recipe on the facing page or maybe also add text over here or change the composition so that you have ample room to write more uh, text on this side itself. But a good cluster of vegetables is a very attractive page. What we're aiming for is uh, various options to make our recipe page look very interesting. To that effect, then we also tried this loose illustration with uh, just with pencil, the lines aren't too accurate, but getting a more casual feel for maybe a recipe which is not too formal and also creates a nice um, uh, young look for illustrations. So here, essentially, we have just tried out a quick uh, illustration process. Same thing here. And with this, what I wanted you to do was be comfortable with the odd shapes of objects. They don't have to be perfect. In our pursuit of trying to draw the perfect cup and the perfect biscotti and perfect tools, we lose time and we are stressing over the wrong thing. So even with imperfect lines, imperfect proportions, just adding the right color in the right place, we are communicating a thought in a very fun manner. That is what I wanted all of you to be comfortable with. This took me also a long time to become comfortable with. Because I too was for no reason other than my own sense of what is right or wrong, such a perfectionist. And often that became a hurdle. So it was almost like, I don't know how many of you face this, but when, um, when you're driving in India, anywhere, you are the only one who is following the rules. And you feel, no, that's the right thing to do. And you're following the rules that every Tom, Dick and Harry goes from around you, breaks the signal, comes in the wrong direction, and you're just saying, no, 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 I'm just going to do that. Now, on the roads, it's fine. You should be doing that. But in terms of art, when you have decided for yourself that this is the way I'm going to do it and everything else is wrong or bad or less, you miss out on the experience. So I am not condoning the behavior of the errant drivers on the street, but as in terms of art experiences, think about meandering around what you think is an absolute right or wrong. There could be several solutions, several new thoughts or ideas that might be just as valid, just as exciting, and also take you into places that you would otherwise not have thought you might have fun. So last week we did layout design in which we went through this entire process of how to think about your uh, all the elements that you have in illustration, how to try all these different things, and eventually how to compose it to make an illustrated page. We did some interesting backgrounds and some easy text as well. So today I want to employ all these things, right, from the first class, the ingredients, the style, the composition elements, 
backdrops and text. And hopefully we can at least do a rough illustration of that, which during the week then you can complete it based on the discussion that we have in class today. All right, so first things first, I, I'm going to walk you through my process. So I'm not going to require you to do any thinking today. I want you to do just an investigation and then ask questions. Because uh, my process is just a, one of the ways in which I would take all this information, come up with an idea and draw out. I have a plan. I have a thought process in mind and now I'm just going to execute it stage by stage. So I'm going to expose you to that process. But in uh, in terms of how I came up with the process, you might have some questions, so feel free to ask me those. Now, today I'm going to illustrate this brownie recipe. And uh, this is my fail-safe recipe, and I would love to share the joy of these brownies with everyone. It's not mine as much as my favorite recipe from Pinterest. So <laughs> I can't claim that this is the best. And I'll share the link with you just to do the right thing. So like I said, the process in from last week's class is first just write the recipe in full. Now I have just written the ingredients. There is a second part to this is the process. So what is the method that we have to do? This is a simple enough recipe where I have to just combine the first three ingredients, whip them up, then add the eggs and vanilla, whip that up, and then uh, add the chocolate chip, uh, but melted chocolate chip, whisk it up. So I know at what points I have to break, whisk stuff, and then add the next ingredient. But that's about it. So there isn't more process than this. I'm not, I don't have to blanch something and then puree something and then add something. So there aren't too many processes. There are just the right breaks. Oh, just one sec. Sorry, my daughter called and she never calls. So, <laughs> the moment, and my family knows when I have classes. If they call between classes, my panic level just hits the roof. So, I had to answer. Okay, going back. <laughs> All right. So, we have this in place. Uh, going by each of these points, I have the ingredients. Let's assume I have the method and any special processes also in mind. Some things I have to melt uh, in either the microwave or double boiler. Uh, no special instructions. And narration could just be that this recipe has endeared me to a lot of new friends that, that I've made over the past year. Uh, so much so that every time I was invited to the same group of friends but different homes, I would carry my brownies and they just absolutely loved it. So thanks to these brownies, I, and I don't deserve the title, I've become the dessert queen of the group. I totally don't deserve it for just making a batch of brownies, but they are amazing. Um, then also the ease of the recipe, I like. It's just one 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 four two two. It's not one and a half and three quarters of this, and one teaspoon, and then four ounces. So it's just the easiest proportion that one can do. And the best bit is your temperature and time <laughs> is also multiples of the same. So 35 minutes and 170, there's some kind of mathematical relation. It's very easy to remember. It's either five times or something like that. Five times the time is the temperature. There's some mathematical connection between the two. And th that is what I enjoy. So anyway, all of this helps to keep the uh, a brain like mine 
following the recipe. And that is a very important or interesting characteristic of the recipe itself, that the measurements are so convenient and they are almost like Lego bricks. One small brick of this, four size brick of this, two size brick of this, and you are sorted. So when visualizing a recipe, all these factors come into place. It's not just about putting all the ingredients down and saying, oh, soft butter, plastic sugar, brown sugar. It's That is one way of going about it. But often recipes have an internal character. And in my mind, this is almost like a mathematical characteristic to getting the best brownies ever. So I'm going to explore the idea. I've not done this before. So I'm going to explore it right in front of you to expose you to the process of visualizing the design. So that's where the illustration of the elements come in. I'm going to try two, three different options in which I want to illustrate whatever I need and then find the appropriate images to draw from literally. In the process, I will also come to what layout might look best. And finally, whether or not I need a backdrop or frames, all of that is just a bit, um, just taking that further. Okay, so here's one pot. Okay, oh, I lost my pens. Now I I feel I could be able to make this in what might look like the image of a baking tray itself. Just as a thought. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ingredients. And I can divide this into a certain number of parts. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Mm. Now, since my math is so bad, I am going to just divide it first and then I'm going to think whether this works. That's, that is my process. I don't do too much of uh, perfection in the beginning. So these are all one parts. One, one, one. Then I can have two, I can have two here. This can be four and one and one. So some could be extra. So let's say this is soft butter. This is caster sugar. Uh, this is brown sugar. And then I also have one of flour and one of uh, cocoa. But first, four eggs. So I have eggs, one, two, three, Four. And then I have two vanilla essence. So vanilla essence, vanilla essence, dark chocolate chips, DCC, DCC. And then I have one of flour and one of cocoa powder. So something is happening and there are a few empty spots in this. So that means I need uh, only about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 1, 13. Right? Okay. So how do I change this? I'm going to try to make this again. But this time, I know what I'm going to do differently. I can accommodate these two, the flour and the cocoa powder, where I put vanilla essence. And vanilla essence can be in a bottle. So what I'm going to do now is put soft butter here. Pasta sugar here. Brown sugar here. Mm. 
then I will have two parts of dark chocolate chips. And this I will have four parts. Eggs. Then I have one, two. This is um, cocoa powder. What am I missing? And flour. So these two will come here. Oh, something is missing. I've goofed up now somewhere. Dark chocolate. A chip. space for the vanilla bottle. Yeah, but I have taken these two here. This one will has come here. This one will come here. So yeah. I still have one. You can put the bottle in the middle. Take a square yeah. on the left and put a bottle in the middle. But Aditi, anyway, you'll get one square less now because you removed two and you're substituting one. So instead of twelve, you'll have eleven. So you're right. You will have one have, Yeah. So one, two, three, three plus four is seven, seven. nine, eight, ten, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Uh, and the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, one, two, three, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. Twelve. See, it's something's missing. I have goofed up. Some... No, no, you took two spaces for the bottle, no? So that becomes thirteen. Yeah. Oh. Wait, uh -huh. where is the bottle? There, here. Oh, okay. Four, oh, five, you can seven, just draw seven, the bottle. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Correct. Okay, great. So I'll just draw. Give a nice little feature to the squares. Yeah. Okay, this is one thought. Yeah, now, this looks cool. Now we need to think about how this can manifest into a good looking illustration we got this for the internal process oh huh. Achha, i just have a question yeah so your flour is your is the quantity of your chocolate chip actually double the quantity of your flour where are the chocolate chips? Yes. No, this is not a quantitative. Uh, ah, it's not quantitative. So that way it will be. This is just a yeah, number. Yeah. So, so no, that no, way. No. This is in cups. The cho chocolate chips. Look at the sugar. Two sugars, two chocolate chips. This is the actual measurement of cups. Huh? Yes. This is in okay. cups. Not the vanilla essence, of course. But this is. Ah, in, okay. So you have cup, cup. Cup, one cup butter, one cup sugar, one more cup sugar. This is the original recipe. So apart from the vanilla essence, everything else is in cups. In cups, correct. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. Is that so much cocoa powder? One yeah. cup powder? <laughs> I am telling you, this is an extremely decadent set of brownies. Why do you think I've Yeah, because this one cup cocoa powder and there's two cups of chocolate chips and two one cup yeah, of flour. Exactly. It is wow. and it's it's so much sugar. And yeah. <laughs> It is, it is uh, it's very decadent. That's going to send you into a hyperglycemic drive. <laughs> totally, totally is what I'm thinking. I think, so the guests that I've served this to, I think are just on a sugar high. That yeah. they, they don't know what is happening. This is it. You're the goddess and I don't mind the title. I only remember the happy. <laughs> Aditi, may I see that paper again, please? Yeah. Because uh, then I want to know what is the half? What is the half? the cups. No, no. So this is just double. Is she's she's given the half recipe and the full recipe. Full recipe. Oh, okay, okay. So I have okay. two. I have two uh, tins yes. or trays. One is an eight inch. One is a sixteen inch. And depending <laughs> upon the party that I'm having, I bake either this or I bake this. Oh, I must try this out sometime. Yes, you could. But our, our warning is I... just reduce the sugar a little bit. It becomes too sweet. 
Uh, you can maintain the same and I also add a cup of walnut to this so hmm. that could have been the extra balances the sugar yeah. actually the yeah. you can also put in some rum yeah yeah all that you can put extra <laughs> I mean, while you're going about it you might as well throw the hog <laughs> grow the whole hog yeah exactly <laughs> amazing I would never have imagined this proportion I know. And I'm not a baker at all. So this is one of the first few baking recipes that I've done. But when I have um, seen, uh, uh, the result is fantastic and it's almost foolproof every time. Okay. 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 So now the second recipe, this is fine and this can be developed further. But I want to make it also, another option that I want to do is try out a more visual um more fun or quirky composition. So while I was thinking this morning about something completely out of the box that would not even could may not even be considered as a recipe illustration, because we uh, the illustration is needs to be the hero. I came up with the idea of creating something like a roadmap to the perfect brownie. So that also can give you a nice narrative so let's imagine we are going through several um, processes here we have we start off with um, soft butter and then we have two sugars And the path from there starts through somewhere where we can also show a bridge or something that says whisk. So they go through this process coming out at the other end as a nice bowl of melded brown color into which we can then add eggs now eggs are very boring unless we make a lovely container for them it's almost like a fairy tale feel and these are the things that i encourage you to do usually egg containers are six but for your illustration, if you need four, go ahead and make a container that houses only four eggs. There's no uh, reason why you shouldn't. So the eggs join from here and here, almost like a tree, you could have a bottle of vanilla essence. Oh, ugly bottle, sorry. And uh, vanilla actually is an orchid. So you could also draw an orchid. And have that join your road. Mm -hmm. Now you don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So in this case, you could probably show um, a little bit of a, maybe a tunnel. And this could also be whisk or you could have mix. Now that's a little bit of, I guess, artistic liberty that the person who is making brownies is not a complete novice and they would know that mix means, of course, you have to whisk it. There's no other way you can mix it. Then you can come out of the tunnel and you have melted chocolate chip cookies. So you could show almost um, to be very poetic. You could almost show it like a river or a waterfall or a chocolate fall like Willy Wonka.
and you have you have the space to write what this is so you can like they would have uh, in an old map write a nice text and then moving on to all purpose flower which could again be either a beautiful looking jar or a bowl and that could uh, what kind of geographical feature could that look like Somehow I'm feeling like, you know, we used to do that science experiment, <laughs> you know, we sketch in the school. Sorry, the what? Science experiments, you know, we used to draw. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So, Aditi, sorry, I'm yeah. interrupting. No, no. Uh, is there a step of whisking again after the melted chocolate chip? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that okay. is, yeah, so we can think of more stuff, but again, you can put the... Uh, melted chocolate chips you can have the whisking thing over here you could also maybe have a roundabout that says whisk now that i've forgotten to put it over there you could have road signs also exactly so you could call this maybe whisk junction or something like that And the other things that are going to come into this will be. So, uh, yeah, the, I could draw two interesting either jars. So one could be a packet, one could be a jar in which these two ingredients are placed. And we, we also could draw something like those silos that they used to store. Grain right. in. Exactly. So even something like a jar in the middle of a landscape is like magical realism. So you can easily um, make it look very unique. That's what I'm trying to say is sometimes we get caught up in the um, in reality so much that we don't know where to expand and be a little free in uh, expressing ourselves and then you can show uh, again you can show a tunnel or some kind of a process from where in which you can draw uh, the temperature And you can say um, 170 degrees, 35 minutes, and have the path come out to a beautiful tray of nice crunchy brownies. So in this, we can show the chips instead of showing them melted because we've written melted. <laughs> rather than showing a brown puddle, I'd rather show the chip itself. Over here again, with sugar, you can just show mountains. Ah, and now see, we could have added made these into actual mountains on the horizon. So I could probably expand this because we have more mountains. And almost like the name of a peak, you can write white sugar. Brown sugar. And making a circle around it could be what differentiates it from the rest of the landscape. So it suddenly is high lit. And as far as butter is concerned, now this is just too perfect. 
I could literally make it the sun. In the landscape. I didn't even plan it. But it can happen like that. And in the middle, you can do all sorts of things. You can make probably interesting signs. Now, remember, we have to write the uh, measurements also. So we can write them as um, in either tablespoons or something. And you can give a legend. So you don't need to write one tablespoon, one teaspoon and whatnot everywhere. You can just say... Caster sugar is one, brown sugar is one, eggs is, you can see four, but this is for the people who can't count. Four, melted uh, dark chocolate chips, two. So this is a very subtle way of putting it. With flour, flour, often baking flours come with some number uh, also, no? You have a very fine flour and also those numbers are very good. So you can just put a nice one here. And cocoa powder is also one. This is one teaspoon. And so one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And vanilla. Done. And now to this, we can make it even more fun by adding a border like they had in old maps. You can also add a scale. So old maps used to have the scale for sailors to measure distances. If you want to take this even further, you could probably uh, think of more ways in which that scale can be used. That will require some design thinking and elimination, but that's why I won't get into that right now. But I'm telling you, my life gets charged when I have to do these kind of visualizing exercises. Now, after you've done this so creatively, it's no fun if you can't come up with a fun title also. Just saying brownies may not be enough. You could apply more imagination and come up with uh, a more interesting name. What does this map look like? Is it, uh, uh, you, could, you could make it more whimsical by saying, uh, what, what did I introduce it as? your map to or your path to map of um you said some road map sorry road map road map road map to the perfect brownies yeah okay When you are writing this also, in this process, write the text as if you were sampling the text also to come on your illustration. Here, don't write it in your regular handwriting.
This is because I have a triangular space here. We can try it. Once I have decided this is what I'm going to do, I will write it in a manner that things don't uh, clash with each other. So I'll start with the big word and then I will move to the smaller words. There isn't space for two the sideways. So I'm going to write two the perfect brownie. Of course, now on the original, on the main page, we are going to have much more room. Also, extra space at the bottom because we are working with an A4 size paper. We have enough room to write special instructions, like over here, for example, sift together. Uh, into mixture. You can put arrows over there and make it more fun. Then you might consider colors. Maybe you want to make the road dark so that it looks more, uh, it attracts more attention, let's say. That might look good. I'm not very happy with this. So I'm going to change the, the something about it. It doesn't look like a very nice tunnel. But once we start working with pencil, I think we can do it. All right. So you get the process. Now, in this case, I have just drawn a serpentine road coming out and making arriving at the brownie. But there are several different things one can do. Depending upon your processes, you could go in a zigzag manner, like the ghat on a uh, in Maharashtra. Every ghat you can see when you're coming from Bombay to Pune, you can see all the trucks going up, going to Bhaveshwar, you can see all of them going like that. And each of them can be a process or an ingredient at the end and snake your way up against the backdrop also of maybe a mountain. It's all up to us. And at the top of the mountain, you can imagine would be the, uh, the name of the recipe. So that's another way of creating a map-like look. All right, so let's begin with the sketching. Now that we know what we're going to do, I'm going to keep checking over here. We have some mountains in the back. We have this triangular name of the recipe. 
we can start building this up. Our earlier proportions were just about so much. And actually for the recipe book, our illustrations have to be slightly squarish. They're a little long, so I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. Ideally, you should illustrate in the proportion that is required for print for the recipe. But right now, because it's A4, you can go all over the place. I'm going to leave a little gap on the bottom, maybe about an inch. And when I make an illustration, uh, even generally for a project, I leave some room around on all four sides. So I'll use a larger page to make the illustration of something about this size. But for our purpose right now, it's just to be able to have some flexibility in case we run out of space, we have some extra space where we can expand just generic stuff. So I've left about a fingers with space from top, which I'm not considering right now, and about two fingers space from the bottom, not considering that we have it. Um, <clears throat> First, let's make that roadmap. It's a nice S shape, which becomes really large over here. Traditionally, we should be drawing stuff in the foreground first and then going back because that is how objects overlap. <clears throat> so we have our recipe, our, our tray. Just draw a slightly flattened diamond. Here we will draw that tunnel. So the tunnel was a bit of a problem. So I can shift it a little to a straighter area here. And we have another road coming from here, which was those two silo-like shapes. So you have flower. And these can overlap. Huh? You don't have to keep the flower exclusive and very tiny. And the cocoa powder could, in fact, even be a box. or a different kind of jar, like the Hershey's cocoa powder. You could also draw the product itself. Huh? I love drawing products. So you have this. Somewhere you have those four eggs. One, two, three, four. Then you have this beautiful mountain here for the chocolate chip. Now I'm also going to leave a gap for that scale. But in some places, the mountain had gone beyond. But I want to know that the map scale or measurement scale is going to come there and then draw the illustration out of the page. I'm very uncomfortable making anything that goes beyond the page. But in this case, it might look good. So I can have a river flowing. I could have a waterfall. Drawing waterfalls is a little tricky. When I draw this in detail, you'll see it better. Then we have vanilla. I'm 
And of course, at some point, we'd had walnuts also. I completely forgot. Please add walnuts. If you like nuts, this is an amazing addition. And walnuts, the even the leaf and the fruit and everything is such a great thing to draw over here. At any point when there is a possibility of drawing botanicals, I absolutely jump to it. Now here, as the road is going behind, I'm going to convert, I'm just going to make it go behind two mountains. And as was in the illustration, I'm going to make this into one and this into another. No, I'm going to take it further down. Draw the mountain here to give enough space for our text. And then we have the sun. Too many lines. Give me one second, I've lost my eraser. <clears throat> yeah, I packed it away in uh, my travel case because yesterday I was showing Garima how to, what to pack for traveling for art. <laughs> and I forgot to take everything out. Now with erasing, remember, just erase the parts that you don't want. Don't erase this whole thing and redraw the whole thing. We have to do that eventually. But you don't have to do it right now. So if this mountain is coming over here, I can easily change the angle of my road. These lines are becoming too long. So I'm going to change that angle and make it slightly shallow. And in, in place of a tunnel, I could draw something else because it's, it's a very ugly feature too close. I could make this shallower. And I could completely do away with the tunnels. I'll think about this. There's something will come. Now, this is all supposed to be metaphorical, right? So though these mountains can look like mountains of sugar, the sun need not look like a round ball of butter. In the place of the sun, I can always make something that looks like butter or just a bowl of butter is also fine. And I can always make these radiating lines for effect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And something I'm missing? Oh, vanilla. Okay. 
Let me look for a nice vanilla bottle. Use the Sprigs bottle, uh, Aditi. That looks quite nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a nice slender one. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Let me see what vintage looks like. Oh, how pretty. Just the labels are very beautiful. The bottles are just plain and simple. This was nice. It's just like a potion bottle, like a medicine bottle, in fact. Homemade vanilla. Okay, let me show you what I'm seeing. Yeah, this is a beautiful design. The rest are all perfumes, I think. This is the vanilla orchid. Look at this one. Very nice. Homemade vanilla extract. And even labels like these look very nice. All right. So we have some idea. I'm drawing this one because it looks quite nice. And I'm also going to look at the... This works. Oh, look at this label. I love this. Okay, maybe. Where am I now? Mm. Oh, it's not taking me back. All right, never mind. Okay, then we have the vanilla orchid. It's a very slender flower, really. And we have our name now. Old Matthew, perfect brown name. So the letters should be aligned properly. Left align. Top align to the illustrated elements.
Now, again, our options are the brownies look in a pan, brownies look very boring. Is this what we want to show as the biggest picture on paper? So maybe what we can do is though we have this map drawn, It comes towards what is going to be the brownies, but we can always show brownies on a plate. So at this time, I've often come across students saying, but can I do this? Shouldn't I show them? I've said roadmap, shouldn't I show them going into an oven? Where is the oven? All of that. So it's your recipe, right? You can decide what how it will look and how you want to present it. All the other stuff is data that you can keep adding. The best bit is we can put these brownies on a beautiful blue colored plate or something like that, which makes your illustration just look so good. Like we did with the earlier illustration, no? this on the pasta. Imagine your brownies on a plate like this. It would be so much better than just uh, an aluminum tin with brownies sitting on them. So you can do that. You can also make vintage bowls with a nice scalloped edge or vintage plates. I love those. And if you still feel very uncomfortable, you could always show a uh, uh, road or, or a small container with the brownies, which then eventually become this. Why did I erase this? Because straight roads are very boring. So I wanted to show a slightly crooked road. If the, if your uh, um, illustrations are large enough and attractive enough, we can get away without writing uh, whisk or mix or whatever. But if it is very significant, then you can make these few features. Maybe we can make a bridge over here because there is this river flowing. I have the river flowing right next to all of this. Let me think of missing something. Butter, sugar, sugar, vanilla, eggs, chocolate chips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. The walnuts are new. Correct. Got it. Oh. All right. So. Let's illustrate now. What are the cocoa powders? Huh? Aditi, can you post a close up of your uh, drawing on the WhatsApp, please? Yeah, all right. Thanks. Uh, yes, before the coloring, actually, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's fully visible, but definitely more than what you can see uh, on camera otherwise. Okay. 
Oh, Tarini sent a beautiful picture. Elinella. Yeah, it's quite appealing. So I thought I'd share. Whoever wants to use can use it. Yeah, very nice. In whatever yes. recipe you know. Okay, I've sent it. Thank you. Oh, oh she is. Yes, this is what I wanted. Mm. So I'm looking at different pictures of brownies. just to be able to draw this. So this is what one would start off with and then it's a matter of uh, making a composite. Look for the best looking elements that go well with each other and you can make the illustration. So here, because brownies are, these brownies are meant to be chewy and full of uh, a texture don't make straight lines your lines can be very communicative and definitely not a zigzag line either they don't have to be continuous you can make the lines that are broken but in the right place so that they communicate either a highlight or a piece that it has broken off, maybe. Ideally, look at a picture of a brownie and then draw that. Try to translate that, stacks of those brownies, into an illustration. And now I can't remember how many times I have drawn something like this. Either it's been a brownie or it's been a, a coconut wadi for some. Last year I did one project for a halwai. So I had to draw all, all sorts of sweets. And that, that's when I realized that just change the color and this will become a brownie. I'm also adding some chips and, of course, the wonderful walnuts. So the chips will be slightly rounded and the walnuts would be an odd shape. This would be the chocolate chip and then the all walnut would be a very odd shape. A little bit of practice of perspective drawing can help over here. Because otherwise, you cannot visualize in space how a cut brownie is going to look in perspective. And sometimes the difference between a good-looking plate of brownies and a convincing uh, plate of brownies and that which isn't convincing is the fact that you've not thought how the stacking works. Like now, I have one on top, two in the middle, and only two at the bottom. Logic tells us that there has to be something below this. So I, if I don't make it, that is where that imbalance will be caught by the brain. Now I'm fine. Now when you're showing something in, in something like a brownie, where whenever you put... Uh, anything on top, usually that gets slightly embedded. So make a slight semi-circular-ish shape for some items. It doesn't have to be for all. So this will look like that, uh, whatever the topping is, either the chocolate chip or the piece of walnut has sunk in a little bit and adds to the illusion of fluff and dimension for your brownie. It's so simple. There's this tiny, tiny things. You don't have to really do too much to convince the brain that some things are the way you would imagine them. Now, when you're making a scalloped plate, 
if you want to make it because it's in the foreground you ought to spend a little time in making it look a little realistic at least not too sad or an excuse for a plate so make the oval that you can and then literally divide it into four parts imagining the four axes so you have one here and then you have one from here imagining where the center would be and now from these sides you can make similar uh, looking plates for this also it helps if you look at pictures of vintage plates So often they have an edge, oh, sorry, that can look like this. Say, for example, you have, oh, why am I drawing it here? This is where the illustration of elements comes in. Each element can be drawn. You can draw the brownies and see how those look. Let's take two, three plates plate shapes and because again I like my test papers also to look beautiful I'm not making them just the same shape this could also look like a wall of plates so I, I'm looking at this one plate design where we have one two two three four five six it's divided into six parts so let me divide one this is easy enough to do you have 12 to 6 2 to 8 and 10 to 4 these are the places where you have V-shaped points. As per the design that I have found. And then you have a smooth line that goes beyond these points. So the V-shape is not too angular. It's, it's just rounded. So the plate that I will get will be somewhat like that. Not even that stock the v is so shallow that the, the top of this oval and the v are almost in the same at the same height this is one then you have one, two, three, four, eight. So you have one, two, three, four. And here, at all these points, the V dips inward. And then you have like a double scallop design. It's not again as dark. It's a it's a smooth flowing line. the center and then there are some designs most of these designs can be replicated very easily one is just start making a broken line along the edge just parallel to the edge that does a lot for the illusion of some sophisticated self-on-self -self embossed pattern Add to that, you can have a few shapes like these. Keep them all broken shapes and in some places add double lines. So from the indent of the V that goes inside, that is where consistently these little spirals are coming out in both directions. 
if you make a very stark line, it will look like a print. We don't want it to look like a print. We want it to look like a embossed design. So if you look at a plate from that time, which has an embossed design, you hardly see the design, but you'll see the shadows of some part of the design. Circles are not complete. Ovals are not complete. None of the shapes are complete. Because wherever you have that shape, in half the areas you have a highlight and the remaining half will have a range of shadow. These plates are easier to illustrate than when you have one which is scalloped all over because it lands up looking, though they're very beautiful, it does not look as impressive or sometimes it looks like it's too much. All right, so we are going to take one or the other of these and do the same thing. Now we've got this perspective marked out. Go through the other areas. Again, see the area and divide it in half. See the area here and here. Take the half mark here and the half mark here. And draw a straight line through the center. Now, here is a slightly tricky part where you convert this design into a three-dimensional flattened, foreshortened plate. <laughs> I'm asking too much. But just bear with me. Foreshortening is nothing but converting something that is 3D that you can see flat into something that you can see larger in the front and smaller in the back. The eye can perceive distance or depth when we draw objects in perspective. It knows that this part of the, my hand is not larger. It just knows that with this perspective, I can gauge the distance over here. So before you start making the pattern, visualize where your plate lies. I think I can make my plate slightly smaller over here because it's just looking as if all my, the stack of my uh, brownies is all on one side. I'm pulling it in from here. The oval remains the same. Ovals in plates will be just the same. Don't even look at this angle. They will just be a flat oval. Any way you look at it. These lines are still valid. Just to reduce confusion, I'm removing the old line, the old oval, but I'm keeping the new one. Here, for our four pattern design, remember we'd gone down here, and I'm just coming up once. So not only is our plate flat, but it's also rounding on the side. So there's a different dimension that we have to add. Otherwise, it'll just look like a doily. So that is where you draw depth on the sides. And make an oval that is slightly closer to the top and a little far away from here, from the bottom. So this distance should be perceived as shorter than this. When you're making the final version, just make it like that. Just a little edge
them. And once you make this double line on the sides, it should look a little more convincing. And even if it doesn't, don't bother. It's just an illustration. So here also the space over here is not as much as over here, but I wouldn't bother with this too much. Moving on. I'm drawing a small tree around the space that I had left for. Aditi ma'am, I have a question. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, what I feel is like, like the way we drew the brownie. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's like my mind sometimes goes like that, that when, uh, you know, my thing comes so nice with, uh, with pen and ink. Huh. So I get a bit scared to, you know, go ahead and do the watercolor. So at times I have like stopped at, you know, just doing the illustration, you know, in pen and, pen and ink mm -hmm. and being happy, but not able to experiment ahead that, you know, maybe I can color it and uh, uh, it would look nice. So how do I overcome that? Because it happens to me quite often that it looks nice and then I'm a bit scared, uh, you know, that with watercolors because maybe at times I have spoiled <laughs> Right. Them. so it feels like no I should not do watercolor because this happened a lot with me you know with that Goa illustrations I have sketched them but I didn't went ahead with coloring them because I was like no I would spoil them and you know they won't look good that's natural I've I've gone through this process also because my first uh, medium was pen and ink the first few are going to spoil let's just accept it okay when you say that you are at least not so afraid ki are hoga nahi hoga. Let's just assume ki ho raha hai. Ho, ho jane do, doesn't matter. With every medium, anytime that you're learning, it's it's like mm. learning to walk again. You cannot walk. Uh, imagine a six-month-old baby. There are some people, I know of a friend of mine who said, I never crawled. I just instantly started walking. Theek hai, he may have, but that doesn't mean that he didn't crawl at all. It's not as if from that day onwards, he was only walking and within six more months, he was running a marathon. So it's literally like when the reason why baby's bones are so flexible is because it is expected that they're going to fall. So I would say, keep your expectations flexible. Sometimes you hit it, sometimes you miss it, but it should not hurt you so much that you abandon it. That's one part. But the second part also is investigation. When things do go wrong, uh, there are the first thing I have found that goes wrong is we overdo the painting. We don't realize when to stop. It gets very good at one point. It's looking excellent. And for some reason, you feel that it will become better. <laughs> and, and then that one color that comes and you know, oh my God, I why did I think of making this shadow? And it's often a dark color. It comes a little later. Or you start doing some lettering. And in your in excitement, you don't check consistency of paint. And then you have this big blob of red or something right in the middle of a beautiful blue sky. And your heart sinks. So the accidents are there to learn from. As heartbreaking as they are. Uh, the but I can give you some pointers to where they you might be going wrong, so you can still you can be cautious even before you go wrong. Ek do bar ho jayega, but even before that, look at paint consistency and the shade that you're using. Always keep a test paper. Always check if this is is this the shade I want. If you are on the fence about it, thinking maybe I don't know, it might look good, it might not look good. Don't paint. Give it a few hours. A creative decision sits in your mind for a while and eventually you come, you gravitate more comfortably to an idea of action. So if you sit for a couple of hours knowing that you have to take a decision on whether you, you need to make a shadow or not or what color you want to make a shadow, 
whether you're eating, sleeping, working, walking, chatting with friends, in the back of your mind, that decision making keeps happening. What if it turns out bad? And then you'll sit with that and say, okay, maybe how bad will it look? Can I visualize it? So what you need is time to sit with that. That is the actual visualizing. At some point, either you will say, okay, I still don't know. Leave it. Don't rush into it. And at another point, you'll say, okay, I if I make it lighter, I want to see how this looks. So let me start with the light. Start with the light. It doesn't look too bad. At that point, leave it when you come to saying okay it doesn't look so bad chalo now i will try the next coat that is a danger zone that is where you have to stop and say no right now it's looking nice let me leave it i will make the next coat in the next picture that is these are our blind spots always always happens no, I think yes, probably because you know, I now I started with uh, illustrating a bit for the food illustrations I have to do. So I was like, I drew some layouts, but then I said, okay, now I will sketch and paint, you know, how my food should look like so that I become comfortable before I go to the actual picture, you know, so that I don't spoil them. No, correct. This is a good process. Do it this way. Okay, I'm quickly going to continue with my illustration with as little uh, commentary as possible, <laughs> which is very difficult. Sorry. We might go over just five or ten minutes. <laughs> right, so I'm here going to make uh, Hershey's... Aditi, I have to leave. I'll catch the last bit in the okay. recording. Yeah. Bye, okay. everybody. Bye. Have a good weekend. Okay, I found some very interesting vintage flower containers also. They have a very nice uh, lid. Oh, walnut knees are not like that at all. These really look nice. What? 
the containers, the flour containers. Ah, nice, no? <laughs> yeah. Reminds you of olden times. Yeah. I've come across this one um, channel on YouTube. I'm, I have to share it with everyone. There's this lady who makes uh, all sorts of recipes, but they are almost like what people might have used in olden times. So she she wears clothing that looks very vintage with frills and all. Only her hands are seen. I think it's a Turkish lady. What beautiful stuff she uses. It's all hand operated. So she'll use one of those mixers. We've all had those in our house, no? So they and she makes stuff like uh, today's recipe was so lip smacking. I'm very tempted to make it. But it um uh, it's croissants, some raspberry croissant. And what lovely blue pottery she uses. I'm telling you that channel is complete uh, what did they call it? Uh, food porn. Is it yeah. Turkuas Kitchen? Sorry, who? Turkuas Kitchen. It's not it could be, uh, I don't know. It's she's got a funny name like that. Because uh, only her hands are seen, she uses uh vintage things and yeah. Uh, in her recipes. Correct. And very beautiful, soothing music in the background. No chit-chat, nothing. She's just constantly doing this, this, whisking and uh, lovely plates and all. Yeah. Must be the same. But all these places, Turkey, Morocco, they have all these olden type of things that look so pretty. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Now here also for the bridge... I will need some 3D. The road needs to come over. I don't know what I've done over here. So I'm going to extend the road from the side. Yeah. This is also too precise, really. It should not be this precise. It's taking away a little bit from that, from the casual feel. Now egg containers. Oh, I found a beautiful egg container. Or actually, I'm going to design my own. If I can. So it has... Uh, should, I, should I not forget it? Not today.
Okay, I'm just making uh, some kind of a container. On Google itself, there are some beautiful vintage egg containers. They involve these rings. So if you're comfortable making circles in perspective, they are good to make. Otherwise, forget it. Our road goes through Varela and here we have here are the circles come. Draw the chocolate chip like you would draw chip. If you have those uh, pointy ends, that's also fine. Or just draw an oval with an edge, that's fine as well. And we can draw a bowl which we can paint in, again, that vintage blue design. But here I'm also going to show partly the melted chocolate itself. Now, as things start becoming busy, we need to think of space to write the names of the ingredients. So I could write melted dark chocolate chips. But I need to think about this and leave some space here. Here, of course, the flour and everything we can write. Here, walnuts are easy to write. But as space starts filling up, these things need to be given some room. I think I'm going to convert this to a label over here. I don't want to write it around. I'm bringing the bottle a little to the right. So I have some room for the flour. It doesn't take too much space. I love making labels, so I would make some kind of vintage label on this. Follow the road. This is the road that comes from the eggs. And then conveniently goes behind the mountain. So because the road is a connecting factor, when it has to go through so many lines, we have to pay attention to making that road look, um, at least be visible. So here's my tunnel. I'm making a little bhogdaya, which will go in behind the mountain. Conveniently. We have a sugar mountain here. And we have the mountain for the waterfall. 
and bringing the other mountain to the right as well. That's it. So beyond this now, I'll make the illustration, but I'll record that also. So at least you can see in quick motion how I am uh, drawing stuff and how I'm writing stuff so that you can follow after me. Okay, so far everyone with me? Oh, sorry. Okay, so does this answer your a few of your questions? How to think about the elements, how to build a story, how to put them together in various options, think more magical, think more whimsical, and Practice everything before you do it. Look for different kinds of images to co make a composite of uh, whatever you want made. I think we have covered everything. If you still have any doubts while you're drawing your own recipes, put it, post that on the group. And uh, it's not just me. Anyone can give suggestions. How about trying something like that? How about making this or the other? Maybe you'll get some reference images from people. So use that help. It's perfectly fine to collaborate. All right. Okay. So next week is going to be a bonus week. If uh, we are, uh, if the other batches also are willing to join on Saturday, we might just have one large batch for a Q and A. If you have issues with your the illustrations that you're working on. Otherwise, then we will do one more recipe illustration. You can all just do the recipes that you want to submit and I can do troubleshooting during that session. Okay? All right. Yeah. Chalo. I'll see Thank you next you so week. Much. Yes. Bye. Bye, everyone. Aditi, Aditi will post all these pics now, na? Yes, I will. Okay. I'll put the okay. pictures first, but the video and the uh, completion, I will do it later. Yeah. Post it yeah. Yeah. All the right. pictures are good. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.